Welcome back. So since the chemical coast of Texas needs petroleum for what they call a feedstock or a base material to produce a variety of other materials that American manufacturing is dependent on, it seems that the advice given to the character played by actor Dustin Hoffman all those years ago in the 1968 movie The Graduate still rings true today. And if you don't remember, I'll remind you, it's plastics. Plastics, yeah. It seems that what that chemical coast, which I believe runs from Corpus Christi down to not Brownsville, but I mean, is Galveston maybe, but is a whole, I mean, just lined the Gulf of Mexico with chemical plants that make all kinds of plastics. And guess what, folks? Because they could not operate power, because they couldn't even operate their backup generators, because guess what? The natural gas couldn't come out the ground because of moisture and that the wells were frozen. And we talked about this. But, yeah, what what I'm trying to explain to you is why, number one, the price of a lot of things that, that use plastics are going up. Everything from the next vehicle you buy to adhesives used in the home that you're looking at to even some of the uh, consumer electronics that you're looking at buying. The Texas freeze just didn't trigger a American plastic shortage because of how integrated the industry has gotten. It's triggered a global plastics shortage because those plants are not up and running. And I always wondered, you know, you see these pictures of all these chemical plants and all these pipes and stuff. And I've always wondered, how do they inspect all that stuff? How do they know all that stuff is operating safely? <laughs> got the answer right here. The reason why a lot of those plants are still offline is they got to painstakingly inspect every single one. Because of the cold temperatures, they don't know if any of that equipment got compromised, uh, ruptured, broken, damaged, uh, or or you know, any of that. So that's going on. And the, the production of plastics is projected to triple by, I can't, I don't know, 2050, I believe. I would not be surprised. Might even be sooner. I get the 2030 and 2050 confused. Mm. These shutdowns are disrupting global supply chains. This is part of the problem with lean manufacturing is that because you're so lean, you are, there's no, uh, Backup. Raw, there's no work in progress. There's no uh, warehouse full of raw material. You usually work within a couple of hours, maybe within a couple of days. But it's made businesses incredibly efficient, but it's also made them very susceptible to outages. You know, And right now, the auto industry, bad enough, is experiencing problems with uh, semiconductor shortages, which is part in part... Also due to yeah, yeah, Texas. Texas, storm, yeah. yeah. In part... They were already having a problem before they got here because of the pandemic. And like generally, only a few companies make these. Very yep. small amount of companies. That's what happens when you are in industries that are capital intensive. Uh, business capitalism tends to pick the winners and the losers. And the people who have the best application of capital. And the big winners then eat up all the little people pretty too. Pretty much, unfortunately. It, the, on the one hand, it gives you tremendous economies of scale that lets you just scale up and produce stuff at a decent price. The downside makes you very susceptible to product interruptions, supply interruptions like this that'll take you offline with no backup. Which we saw during COVID too with masks and all those Mm -hmm. other ventilators and everything. By the way, yeah, which are made of what? Plastic. Plastic, And that's some of the stuff that's gonna be a problem. Uh, Medical face shields to smartphones. And yeah, they said this, this crisis took more plants offline than Hurricane Harvey did back in 2017. And remember, back then, Houston got 40 inches of rain. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the price things. I, I think I, people have been noticing them and saying, oh, prices of certain things have been going up, but they don't seem to know why. Oh, very easily. Prices for polyethylene, polypropylene, and other chemical compounds used to make auto parts, computers, and a vast array of plastic products have reached their highest levels in years in the U.S. as supplies tighten. And we have a real, as Ken and I were talking about, we have a real plastics problem, and I'll keep this short, but we consume so many plastics, and it gets everywhere to the point to where in microplastics, you ingest around a credit card's worth every week. Mm. That's how much you ingest. Mm. And we don't know how to get rid of it. 
And also, because it quick, doesn't degrade. Quick shout out: if you recycle, please look up what your local plant accepts as recyclable. Because if you're giving them a bunch of crap that they can't recycle, they have to sort through all that, and it makes it super inefficient. And it just makes it all worse because most things are not recyclable because these plastic companies lie to you to try and act like they put it on you instead of themselves, which we need to regulate better because most things are not recyclable. Chase's PSA. Right <laughs> Thank you. There in the Thank middle you. of all of it. Thank you. Your PSA. But here's the thing, folks. The, all of this shortage is going to cr- increase costs and delays for automakers, home builders, and countless other businesses. Because guess what? Adhesives, fasteners, all that stuff. Petroleum based. All the food you buy is generally in plastics. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Particularly grocery well, bags. Me- meat. <laughs> yeah. Which is a sanitation issue. Uh, the trays that are vegetables, used. Vegetables. I mean, not so much vegetables. Some of those but, clear. But meat, to, I mean, meat for one thing. Yeah. And because you got to do it that way. Yeah. For sanitation reasons. And that could be a real problem. Sorry, there are vegetables that are just by themselves. You buy big, but a lot of them are just in packages. The store. Oh, I go to hy V right now. You'll see it. I happen to work. I know. I know. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Anyway. Um, so the bottom line is, with all of this going on, you thought we were clear of Texas. You thought we were done talking about Texas. But because of their proximity to the crude oil refineries, you have all these chemical plants. And because the chemical plants can't get the crude because the crude couldn't get out of the ground or to the refineries because of uh, the, the wells being frozen and the power being knocked offline. And, oh, by the way, because they're busy inspecting these plants, they can't just turn them on. It's not just a matter of, oh, they're knocked offline. Oh, we'll be up within the hour. No, some of these plants they're talking about could be offline for months, months. So what does that mean to you, the consumer? I'll tell you what it means. It means that anything that has a, a basics in plastic or petroleum, the price of it is going up, whether it's direct in terms of like gasoline, indirect of like packaging or used in anything else uh, as, a, as a product to create something else. It's going to go up. At, at the worst, it's going up. And at the best, you're going to have to wait for it. So as you see stuff going up around you, no, it is not a conspiracy. It is the Democrats. Yeah, right. (laughs) Uh, It is it is a result, a lingering result and an unintended consequence of the power outage due to the cold snap. Climate change is real, people, and it impacts us in many different ways. You would never think that it would have impacted the plastics industry. I mean, how could it? But yeah, it did. It is. It does. And, you know, it's going to take a while for this to work itself out. How much do we say kind of a, how much plastic seem to come out of this Texas, Texas area? Pretty much all your feedstock, anything that is used for a base to make other plastics mm-hmm. come from the chemical coast. So whether it's a finished plastic that's ready to go. It's a process or, of or, it. Or yeah. a process. A Uh, a processed material that gets processed into something else or combined with other stuff to make other stuff, Uh uh, you're going to be in a hurt city for a while. Uh Yeah. 